On a blistering summer day in 1874, the small town of Enterprise buzzed with the news of Jonathan Newhouse's latest invention. Newhouse, a peculiar and ambitious inventor, had created a suit of solar armor designed to protect the wearer from the fierce heat of the sun while crossing deserts and burning alkali plains. The suit, made from sponge and rubber, utilized water and evaporation to keep the wearer cool. Newhouse, eager to demonstrate its effectiveness, planned a daring journey into Death Valley. The idea of solar armor had captivated Newhouse's mind for years. He had spent countless hours in his workshop, meticulously crafting and refining the suit. The sponges were sewn into the fabric, and tubes of rubber lined the interior, designed to circulate water throughout the suit. He believed the constant evaporation would keep the wearer cool, no matter how intense the heat. The day before his departure, Newhouse held a demonstration in the town square. Curious townsfolk gathered to witness the unveiling of his creation. He stood proudly in his suit, looking like a knight from another era, albeit one clad in strange, modern materials. The townspeople marveled at the ingenuity of the suit, and some even dared to believe that it might actually work. I'll prove it to you all, Newhouse declared. Tomorrow, I set out for a two-day journey into Death Valley. When I return, you'll see that this suit can conquer the sun itself. Early the next morning, Newhouse set off, his heart filled with hope and determination. He carried with him enough water to keep the suit functioning, confident that his invention would protect him from the deadly heat. As he ventured deeper into the desolate expanse of Death Valley, the scorching sun bore down upon him. Yet, the suit did its job. He felt cool and comfortable, a stark contrast to the searing environment around him. By noon of the first day, Newhouse was making excellent progress. The suit's evaporative cooling system worked flawlessly, and he was able to maintain a steady pace. He even allowed himself to imagine the accolades and recognition he would receive upon his successful return. However, as the day wore on, he began to notice a chilling sensation creeping through his body. He attributed it to the suit's efficiency and pressed on. That night, as the desert temperatures plummeted, Newhouse struggled to keep warm. The suit, designed to combat the heat, now worked against him. The water circulating through the sponges and tubes began to freeze, creating a thin layer of ice against his skin. Shivering, he tried to find a way to adjust the suit, but the fastenings were laced up behind him, out of his reach. He wrapped himself in his blanket, hoping to last through the night. The next day, Newhouse awoke to find frost forming on his beard. He felt a deep, penetrating cold that seemed to emanate from within the suit itself. Despite the sun climbing high into the sky, the cold persisted, and his movements grew sluggish. Desperation set in as he realized the severity of his situation. He was trapped in his own invention, the very thing meant to save him now threatening to be his undoing. As the day wore on, Newhouse's strength waned. He stumbled and fell repeatedly, each time struggling to rise. The suit's weight and the ice forming within it made every movement a Herculean effort. Finally, near the end of his strength, he spotted a rock formation that offered some shade. He managed to crawl to it, leaning against the cool stone for support. The suit's water reserves had frozen solid, and he could no longer move. He sat there, helpless, as the desert sun beat down mercilessly. Hours passed, and the relentless heat continued, but Newhouse felt none of it. The cold had taken hold, freezing him in place. His beard was covered in frost, and a long icicle hung from his nose, defying the blazing sun overhead. As his consciousness faded, he thought of the townspeople, of his hopes and dreams, and of the cruel irony of his fate. The next day, a group of Native Americans traversing the desert spotted something unusual in the distance. As they approached, they saw a figure seated against a rock, motionless. It was Newhouse, still in his solar armor, frozen stiff. His beard was encased in frost, and the icicle from his nose glistened in the sunlight. The sight was both tragic and bewildering, a testament to the unpredictability of human ingenuity. The Native Americans returned to Enterprise with news of the discovery. The townspeople were stunned, their excitement and anticipation turning to sorrow and disbelief. The story of Jonathan Newhouse and his solar armor spread quickly, appearing in newspapers across the country. 
It became a cautionary tale about the perils of overconfidence and the unforgiving nature of the desert. In the July 2, 1874 edition of the Enterprise, writer Dan DeQuill recounted the story with a mixture of admiration and melancholy. At a distance of about 20 miles out into the desert, the Indian pointed to a human figure seated against a rock, he wrote. Approaching, they found it to be Newhouse, still in his armor. He was dead and frozen stiff. His beard was covered with frost, and, though the noonday sun poured down its fiercest rays, an icicle over a foot in length hung from his nose. There he had perished miserably because his armor had worked but too well, and because it was laced up behind where he could not reach the fastenings. The story was reprinted in newspapers nationwide, capturing the imagination of the public. Some saw it as a tragic tale of hubris, while others marveled at the ingenuity and ambition of Jonathan Newhouse. His invention, though ultimately flawed, was a testament to the spirit of innovation that drove men to push the boundaries of possibility. Years later, the tale of Jonathan Newhouse and his solar armor remained a fixture of local folklore. Visitors to the Armagosa Mountains and Death Valley would hear whispers of the inventor who dared to challenge the sun and paid the ultimate price. The rock where Newhouse met his fate became a somber landmark, a reminder of the thin line between genius and folly. In the end, Jonathan Newhouse's story was not just about a man and his invention. It was a reflection of the human spirit, the relentless drive to explore and innovate, and the unpredictable consequences that sometimes accompany great ambition. His legacy endured, not in the form of a successful invention, but as a poignant reminder of the risks and rewards of daring to dream.